Hello guys and welcome to the Sportbits YouTube channel. So today I am Mizgan Basani, a football analyst and a football writer. Will uh, tactically uh, break down a football football game for you. So uh, I am a uh, I cover especially uh, the Premier League and the big games and all the games in the Premier League and the uh, Champions League games. So today we will be um, covering uh, the the big game of this Premier League weekend, which was uh, undoubtedly. Uh, Spurs versus Chelsea, the London derby at the Wembley Stadium, and and the result we all know. Spurs won the game three goals to one against uh, a fairly, uh, I would say, a naive Chelsea team. It, it was a collectively naive performance from the Chelsea team. I think who were defending uh, a, an unbeaten run. So they have they haven't uh, lost the game so far in all competitions. So losing a losing a game in this fashion in a in a in a manner in which they did yesterday was. Uh, Kind of, uh, say, a kind of uh, partly we can say it was a, a bad day in the office for Sari and his men, and partly it was say that it, it is a a project still under construction for Mauricio Sari, so he will uh, come up with days when his team won't be able to uh, uh, apply the plans if uh, uh, told by him or uh, explained by him on the training pitch. So let's get straight to the game. I think we'll, uh, before tactically breaking down uh, the nuances of, of the game, we will see how the how both teams uh, lined up uh, uh, formation wise. So for Spurs, they had Hugo Lloris in goal, Serge Aurier at right back, John Foyth and Toby Alderweireld as centre backs, and Ben Davies at left back. They had uh, Musa Sissoko, Eric Dyer, and Eriksen as a midfield trio. Eriksen. Main, uh, was more of a, a floating number eight where he was acting as a left winger as well or making inside movements and pressing in in midfield as well. And then Delhi Ali is a number 10. Son and Kane were the two strikers. Son was a supporting striker and Harry Kane as a lead striker. For Chelsea, they had Kepa in goal, Aspilicueta at right back, Rodiger Luis as a centre back partnership, Marcus Alonso at left back, Jorginho as a number six. Flanked by Matteo Kovacic and Angolo Kante, the front line consisted of Eden Hazard, Alvaro Morata, and William. So the first thing I wish I should tell you that this was a diamond formation uh, applied by uh, Mauricio Pochettino. Yeah, this this was the diamond. See, Sissoko, Dyer, Eriksen, and Ali. See the the good thing. Uh, I think the first thing which uh, uh, which surprised Chelsea in the in a, in, a, in, a, in an explosive Spurs start was. I think they, uh, most of us also, and uh, I think it included Sari also. I think Sari thought Ericsson would play left wing or Ericsson would play light, right wing and Son would play left wing and Kane would play the sole striker. But I think, but the change, or I would say, I think Pochettino uh, made a slight change uh, uh, just before the game or, or or in the training session it was worked out. They had Sissoko and Ericsson flanking as a narrow midfield alongside Eric Dyer. And Dele Alli was, number, was, uh, was a number 10 virtually man-marking Jorginho, who, uh, in my opinion, is one of the most important players for Chelsea in a, in a Sari system. So, effectively, uh, what Pochettino did is nullify the most effective uh, cog of the Chelsea wheel, that is, man-marking Jorginho with Ali. Ali is a very clever player when, when it comes to uh, uh, marking, pressing a player off the ball and making several movements so that he, uh, so that the, uh, the so that the player, at in this case Jorginho, gets out of position uh, at all times, which which leaves space in this area. So, uh, so, and uh, with, this also allowed uh, Sissoko, Dyer, and Eriksen to numerically dominate the other two, Kovacic and Kante. So this is where the midfield battle was won by Spurs. So uh, I think the, if you all know the big games, if the midfield battle is won, most of the times the game is won by that team. So I think Spurs by uh, deploying four in midfield and dominate numerically and also physically dominating the midfield on and off the ball uh, where we're able to dominate Chelsea uh, throughout the game and they won the game eventually and uh, I think Chelsea were uh, the perpetrators of their own downfall at times the centre-back partnership of Luis and Rudiger who, are, who have been very good so far this season where we're really not at their best throughout the game Luis had a very bad game I think he gave, away, he gave away a very bad fall around, foul on Harry Kane around this area in a dangerous position. And then Christian Eriksen whipped a, a very good ball in for Ali to just uh, flick the, the header, uh, flick the ball towards the towards goal with his header and Spurs led. For the second goal, I think 
this is where uh, Ali's movement was uh, very clever. I think Ali uh, moved him uh, moved himself into a little bit of a uh, in between, uh, or I should say, in between the striker, between the centre backs in this kind of position, which also forced Jorginho to be in the no man's land situation or follow Ali. Then Kane was in this position for the second goal. He shot the ball from this position and. Luis, uh, I would say, sided away from the ball, from the shot that Kane had, which uh, uh, deceived Kepa more, uh, I think, uh, more or less, and then he, and the Spaniard couldn't make a save to make it 2-0 for Spurs. For the third uh, Spurs goal, I think it's the same thing was there. The, the likes of Kovacic and Kante was higher up the pitch, and Jorginho was uh, there to protect the uh, Chelsea backline, and Son made a run, started the run from here with the ball, his son started the run with the, with the ball, he beat and Jorginho with pace and then got past Luis with, I think, so much ease, I think it, it, was, it, was, it was very surprising the way Luis was beaten with so much ease. So this was, this was, this was Spurs, uh, tactically uh, overpowering Chelsea in midfield and also in attack, the way the, they, they moved the ball and yeah, particularly, and just uh, a quick mention of being son, his runs and the, the his runs and the timing of his runs because he Alonso whenever Alonso went forward the ball Son took this took this area of the field because he knew Luis doesn't have the pace to catch him up if he if he makes the runs on the side of the center back so he was very clever Pochettino was very clever to deploy him in that reason in that region and Kane was uh, occupying this region around Rudiger as well quite in between the center backs and Ali as we all know was uh, occupying this position so this is this is what uh, Spurs did right to win the game. So just uh, just to mention on how Chelsea were wrong. I think they defensively were very wrong, but I think the manager could have changed the game in this aspect, uh, in in midfield especially. They could have put he could have put uh, Kante uh, in the position where Jorginho was playing and replaced Jorginho with Barkley. I think Barkley is a more proactive player in the midfield these days. I think he's improved a lot in his uh, ball carrying abilities and being more proactive while tracking the runs. So. While Jorginho was getting overpowered and Jorginho is not really proactive when, he, when, he's getting, when he's getting marked like that, I think the experience of playing Premier League football uh, of Kante, I think he should have been deployed as a number six and Jorginho could have been replaced by Barkley. That that, that would have uh, given more headache to Ali uh, as a player like because Kante is more proactive. He, he can he can overpower you as, a, as an attacker as well and he can cover more ground as a defensive midfielder. This is one where I think Sari uh, lost it because Sari must should have changed this. But I think by half time he should have saw this. he should have seen this and should have made this change. Jorginho was ineffective throughout the game, and the fact that the Chelsea's attack weren't also at their best. I think Eden Hazard was too central throughout the game. He was trying to play in between the space of the centre back or a full back, or sometimes as a supporting number ten to Moratas. At times we saw Hazard in this position. I think which didn't help the cause as well because see if uh, Aurier as we all know with all due, due respect to Aurier he's a, such a good uh, he's, he's, he's a, he's a good fullback but he is not good when attacked one-on-one -on -one against a very good player so if Hazard would have taken him one-on-one -on -one in wide areas with the ball I think could have been more fruitful for Chelsea than he could have put more balls in the box but the fact that Morata was getting offside more often than not and his movements were very very uh, telepathic with uh, Hazard and William. I think that's forced the Belgian to come more central and link up the play and be an effective person in uh, be an effective player in front of the goal. So all in all, it was a tactical masterclass from Pochettino. And the fact that he had Son, Ali, Eriksen, and Kane all four starting for the first time this season helped him to play this formation and overpower Chelsea in midfield, in attack, and I think defensively Chelsea made it easy for them uh, as well because Chelsea didn't attack with Venom as we are, they are supposed to do. So it was a good win for Spurs. They are flying now and, and Chelsea uh, and Sari. I think Sari will learn more about the Premier League football and how to make proactive changes in games to uh, make and to uh, turn the game towards his team's favour. So that's it from the tactical breakdown of uh, Chelsea versus Spurs. Spurs uh, deserved winners, and we'll come back with the, on the another video. And uh, and if you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the Spobits YouTube channel for more videos in the future. Thanks a lot.